When you look at the human brain and you realize that a huge chunk of our cerebral cortex is devoted to our fingertips, you realize that the sense of touch is essential to define who we are. Touch is so important in human development. The people who don't touch or are hesitating to touch, that oftentimes they feel not only physically disconnected from other people, but psychologically and socially disconnected as well. So if we want to have robots that have a social and emotional component to them, it's through the intimacy and, and physical contact that bring us to life. Robots that smile, feel relief, or shed tears this defies our very definition of robot. Yet in the future, that is precisely what our humanoids will do. And it will all start with the sense that most connects us to one another, touch. If robots are going to interact with humans without injuring them, they are going to have to have some of the sensitivity that human caregivers have. Today in Southern California, Gerald Loeb and his company, Syntouch, are developing the tech that could make this type of sensitive robot a reality. They've already built a piece of it, a finger-like sensor called Biotac. The Biotac sensor is a tactile sensor that replaces most of what you have in normal biological fingertips. What we call the bone is epoxy, a nice hard material that's easily molded around all of the electronics, which we put in the bone for safekeeping. Uh, silicone skin slides around the core and is inflated with a fluid to give it a squishiness very similar to the human fingertip. Poke your finger and you can see an indent from the pressure. Biotac does the same thing, except here the squishiness helps translate physical contact into analytic data and converts it into human terms. It's hard or soft, or it's rough or smooth, or it's warm or cold. But the real breakthrough design is one that mimics a unique detail in nature's schematics for the human finger. The skins we initially made were smooth on the outside because it's a whole lot easier to make smooth skins. And we decided to try machining a pattern of fingerprint-like ridges, same dimensions as fingerprints, into the mold in which we made the skins to see what would happen. And lo and behold, the amplitude of the vibrations as we rubbed it over surfaces got 20 or 30 times larger. Turns out sensing vibrations is key when it comes to defining texture. The rougher the surface, the greater the vibrations. Could you design a robot that if you shook hands with it, uh, you couldn't tell whether you were shaking hands with a robot or a human. Now maybe you're getting at the essence of intelligence. 